All right, good evening, everybody. It's a few minutes after 5.30 on Tuesday, May the 21st. This is a recess meeting uh, that is now back in progress from our uh, previous uh, regular monthly meeting. And so we are officially called to order. Uh, we do have uh, four of our board members in addition to the mayor present tonight. Uh, Mr. Howe uh, has a work obligation tonight, and uh, Ms. Seacrest is uh, uh, still uh, dealing with uh, the loss of her daughter, um, so we keep our thoughts and prayers with her tonight. Uh, and with that, we will start with an invocation. Father, we thank you for the beautiful day today. We thank you for the, the changing of the seasons. And we thank you for the opportunity to come tonight, together tonight and to, uh, to evaluate uh, what you will have us do with the budget for the town for the upcoming year. And also as we um, discuss uh, and review the manager's performance and identify uh, the, the areas of, uh, of success and growth and opportunity uh, that lies ahead. Be with us as we make decisions tonight, as we discuss our budget, Help us that we may uh, discern your will. Amen. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, board, you have a proposed agenda before you. Um, are there any requests for additions or deletions to the agenda? And if not, is there a motion to adopt? Staff, are there any additions? Well, I, I would just like to note that what, what's before is a suggestion of an amended agenda uh, from what was originally published during our original meeting. But so uh, we've got a, an additional grant opportunity we'd like to uh, discuss this evening, which has been added in there. And uh, we've tweaked the closed session um, as well to... Uh, include one other item if needed uh, and so just submit that for your consideration okay so board you have a proposed amended agenda before you from staff is there a motion to adopt that or need to add or delete any other items motion to adopt please. all right there's a motion from mr miller is there a second 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 from mr muhammad all in favor all right all opposed and that is approved so we will move right into uh, the, the most recent item that was added, and that is to consider authorizing the manager and staff to apply for North Carolina Trails uh, and complete the Trails grant up to $100,000 for the proposed Grants Creek Blueway. Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mayor and members of the board. And I believe Joe Morris is with us via Zoom. Is that correct? He should be uh, able to, there he is. Mm -hmm. and uh, and so what we'd like to do is have Joe uh, describe this opportunity that's uh, available to us with a bit of a short application window and uh, and so with that I'll turn it over to Joe thank you Peter um, hope everybody's doing well tonight um, we have known about this grant for some time uh, but we recently had a review with our um, uh, the person with Parks and Recreation Trust Fund, who is our regional recreational recreation specialist, a fellow by the name of Trey Fouché, he, he is managing our our part of grant. And in the discussion, um, he said, "You folks might want to consider applying for this grant that is due on May 29th because it." Uh, aligns with a couple of things that I'm observing in, in Spencer. And uh, so uh, with that in mind, we began looking into it. And so one of the, um, the formalities of uh, pursuing grants is to request permission uh, to apply for them. And I have um, provided a, uh, a very truncated uh, PowerPoint presentation. I have it in the and of uh, Mike Shu there uh, in the, uh, the uh, council meeting chamber. And uh, Mike is gonna load some of the images that you have seen many, many times before. But uh, generally speaking, this, this particular grant uh, is through the North Carolina Trails Program. It's administered by the division, North Carolina Division, division of Parks and Recreation. 
Um, it's a grant that um, I think in 2021, uh, the General Assembly um, allocated uh, or legislated funds for up to, uh, there were $30 million in trail development funds. And a portion of that was specifically assigned to the Complete the Trails program, which is a fund uh, that has created this, this grant opportunity for us uh, to uh, help small communities with populations of less than 25,000 to um, connect to state trails. And uh, some, one of the grant criteria is that you have to be within six miles of a state trail. And we're actually adjacent to the Yadkin River State Trail. I don't know the number of, of walking trails, but I think there are five or six uh, water-based trails. Yadkin River State Trail is one of those. And we have been doing a few things on Spencer uh, that we think would potentially align with this particular opportunity. Um, one of the things about it is based on our population, uh, there are no matching funds required from the town. And the uh, sort of the range for the grants is between 25, the grant application is 25,000 to 100,000. And we think that we have a project that might work out and so um, the first slide that you're seeing uh, there is one that you've seen many, many times, uh, but we've never actually talked about a specific component that's called the Grants Creek Blue Way. And so I'll ask um, Mike to advance to the next slide. Okay. So, uh, I think that uh, Steve Blunt has, in uh, previous uh, presentations to the board, identified a parcel that is on 7th Street. And this particular parcel is part of uh, the recent expansion that we had of land donation by the Three Rivers Land Trust um, to create potentially a trailhead on the northern end of the Sandback Educational Forest. And it's within about 400 feet, uh, roughly, of Grants Creek. And we've spent the better part of last year uh, using grant funds from uh, the North Carolina Department of Agriculture uh, through the Stream Restoration uh, Grant Program to remove all of the woody debris between Moxville Avenue in Salisbury, all the way down Crants Creek, along our city limits, and out to what I call the open water, which is uh, where the the, um, uh, the backwater of the Atkin River that is uh, part of the Wildlife Resources uh, Commission game lands. And this would has created essentially a pad an open paddle trail that extends the full length of a grant spree between Moxville Avenue and the Yakin River State Trail. And so what we are looking to do is by creating this trailhead, which would be a, a you know, a, a land-based trailhead for the, the northern portion of the, uh, the Sandback Educational Forest, but with about 400 feet of natural trail surface and a parking lot and a kiosk and a culvert uh, driveway connection to um, 7th Street, we would also be able to have a blue way. And this is something that we have talked about um, through the create, Creating Outdoor Recreation Economies plan. One of our uh, committee members, Bob Pendergrass, has actually paddled the section of the, of the blue of Grants Creek. Uh, with the recent rain, it is navigable. Uh, there are times during the summer where it is too shallow, but spring, uh, winter, fall, many, many days, there's plenty of water in Grants Creek that would allow you to put in at 7th Street and paddle out to the Atkin River State, Tr State Trail. That's a distance of about two miles. And then once you get into the river itself, you can go down to um, the Davidson River Park 
the the uh, uh, York Hill or Fort York uh, boat launch that's there adds another another two miles. So conceivably, you could park a car over at uh, Davidson County River Park, Fort York, have someone transfer you back around to Seventh Street, put your kayak or canoe into the water, and then spend four, five, six hours paddling out and then have a, a nice day on the water connecting to the safe trail uh, via the 7th Street uh, or Grant Street Blue Way. So Mike, if you would advance to the next slide, please. And so some of the things that um, you, you may see in the slide uh, presentation references to Appendix A and so, so on and so forth, I've actually started putting this together in the hopes that you will authorize me to actually submit it. Um, and so what we're looking at is a, a, a 10 space gravel parking lot with a, a gravel path or a natural trails path down to Gratz Creek uh, that we would have uh, an interpretive kiosk that would be built on the site in a signboard area and a driveway connection to 7th Street. So that's this is a, a uh, image that I would include in the grant application. So Mike, if you would advance to the next slide. And one of the things that we are required to do is provide um, a survey of the property and all of the legal descriptions and that sort of thing that would, that would uh, demonstrate that we actually own the property. And we do have the deed and we have the conservation easement. And conservation easement incidentally says that we can build a parking lot, but it has to be 300 feet or more from the edge of Grants Creek. This particular parcel is 400 feet, so we, we don't violate the conservation easement. So, um, Mike, if you go to the next slide, please. And so this is um, refreshing the memory of, <laughs> of some of the folks that were on the board last year. Uh, you remember, may or may not have seen this. I, I don't recall. Uh, there was a proposal to build townhomes along 7th Street and the developer had actually offered to build this parking lot for us. And for a variety of reasons, one having primarily to do, I suppose, with the nature of the soil in that area, that the, there might've been additional costs with the type of foundation that would be needed to support um, buildings on this soil type. The decision to proceed with the development uh, has, if it hasn't been um, canceled, it's at least delayed. I think they're actually still looking at this as a possibility uh, with some other structural uh, uh, considerations being made. So we had a parking lot design, and then uh, we would be able to use this particular design uh, with um, the grant, fund, build this parking lot with grant <coughs> funds that are available through the Complete the Trails program. So, Mike, on to the next slide, please. Um, I've done some research about different types of um, canoe and kayak uh, facilities and the um, Iowa Department of Natural Resources has a really great guide, uh, set of guidelines for uh, water-based trails and actually all of their state parks there are uh, really well done and was able to glean this uh, uh, particular um, standard from their guidelines. That would be a, a stair step, uh, sort of a low impact uh, trail construction or, or um, launch, canoe kayak launch into Grant's Creek. This is what we're proposing, but one of the things that they say in the Iowa guidelines, which uh, made perfect sense to me, is that every stream connection, every blue way is different. And so you're making decisions in the field based on the conditions in the field. And so you have these general um, guidelines that you pursue. But it may not look exactly like this, but this is sort of what we're um, pricing out, at least, as part of our, our proposition, uh, if we're allowed to apply for the grant. And so, Mike, on to the next slide. And this is just a couple of images that I'm um, gathering that will be uh, sort of um, 
supplemental to the application about other trailheads that we built and the comprehensive plan will be included in that the core plan would be included in it and those are just kinds of the uh, uh, the types of things that i would be pulling together uh, to fit in this proposed application so what we're asking the board uh, to consider is to authorize uh, the, the town manager and the staff to apply for this grant it's due um, may 29th which is a week from tomorrow so we have time to do it and um, i would be happy to entertain uh, any questions that uh, anyone on the board might have thanks chair and board just to reiterate so for our community with a population less than five thousand, it would not require any local match so a hundred thousand dollar grant in full with with no spencer money involved so, board, do you have any questions at this point? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Joe. How much do you estimate the proposed that uh, parking lot you're talking about? Have you got any idea of what the cost would be? Uh, so, uh, it's a it's a great question. Um, I I do have um, a, sort of a general idea. I'm I'm working with a um, a local contractor to at least help me to you know develop a preliminary budget for it. We would anticipate that um, most of the cost will be due to the sort of the, the clearing and the grubbing out of the tree stumps. And then we're probably looking based on that soil type to have six to eight inches of uh, gravel. Uh, we're actually pursuing uh, some possible connections that we have in, in, um, in Spencer uh, to uh, some of the uh, the granite quarries in the neighbor in the uh, in the region, but I'll I'll try to cut through. The, the parking lot is probably going to cost forty thousand uh, dollars or or more just to do the clearing, and then all of the stone. But if we can get some donations and and that sort of thing, we have to reduce the cost. Um, the thing I will note is that the maximum amount of the award is one hundred thousand dollars, and um, this particular grant will not exceed that. So um, uh, half of the cost will probably be in the parking lot. Okay, let me ask you a further question. Say, sure. for example, we were only received maybe the minimum $25,000, and that's not going to do what you're saying for the $40,000 that you're estimating. Are we committed to doing that project because we've already got the money set aside or what? So uh, there, there would be a grant agreement that would be issued to the town and um, that would be executed by the, uh, the manager and the mayor, I think. Um, but to more specifically answer your question that I, I think there are other sources in the community that we, we would be able to approach um, that would potentially help us with this. Uh, we've been, we, it, it, incidentally, it's a, a three-year window once you're awarded the grant. We won't know to, if we're allowed to apply and we receive the grant, um, we won't know that we're awarded until this winter. It's going to be sometime late fall, early winter, when they're going to notify the grant recipients. Not so sure why it's going to take that long, but that's what they've told us. And we would pursue additional funds in the community and we would make sure that we had adequate funds to proceed with the project um, before we would agree uh, or, or sign the grant agreement. So, I mean, basically, if we get it and decide we're not going to be able to use it, there's always the, we can always refuse it. I will say, it doesn't reflect well, though, if we refuse a grant. Yeah. It doesn't reflect back to the state very favorably. No, it wouldn't. Um, but would this also, this is also associated with the hiking trail that's going to eventually tie up in this. Isn't that right, Carl? I that's mean, right. hiking trail that will That's right, that will attach to stand back Eventually, yeah. when they, okay, that's fine. So, I, so that's, actually, that's actually the other boot that will drop, is that we will have another application due September 1st, uh for the um uh, through the uh, the uh, recreate not recreational trails program but um great trails great trails program 
that we will be requesting funds to build the trail within uh, the 40 acre addition that was recently uh, donated by the land trust. So that's that. That's the other thing that's happening here, is that we're going to try to get funds to get to the trailhead, and have the trailhead paid out for out of a different pot of money, which will actually, you know, uh, 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 save some of the cost of the Great Trails Program, Great Trail State Program. Being. So there's there are, we're working a lot of angles on this. And, and, and Joe, um, that that one is is uh, similar to Parks and Recreation Trust Fund, right? right. Matching up to five hundred thousand dollar per dollar match. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and so, uh, what we're doing um, essentially is we are implementing the Parks and Recreation Master Plan and the Core Plan. We're, we're using that as our uh, guiding principles for pursuit of the build out for these outdoor recreation amenities. And so um, we're very fortunate to have really good support in the community, uh, people that are behind us. Um, and so we we think that these will be uh, important elements to add to the Sandback Educational Forest and provide these outdoor recreation opportunities to uh, Spencer and surrounding communities. So, Joe, one question on the, the trailhead in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the layout that was proposed by the previous uh, developer, are there any concerns with the getting a driveway permit from NCDOT on 7th Street relative to Grants Crossing Lane and Whitehead Avenue? Because I know that's kind of a tricky set of intersections there. So we, we would, uh, and I've talked to Joel about this, and the important thing is that the trailhead driveway needs to be offset from Whitehead Avenue so that nobody comes across Whitehead Avenue and just goes directly into the trailhead. We would need to make sure that that's clearly delineated. And uh, the, the, but the short answer being is, uh, Joel has indicated that he does not anticipate it will be a there will be a driveway permit issue that we can be far enough away from nearby intersections to have a a ten car parking lot driveway and and you know uh, when that was proposed I was actually concerned that ten cars might be a lot but having been on a few uh, group paddles. With folks, I actually think there will be times when you'll need every space in that parking lot. And especially when you have people that are hiking in Sandback Forest and people that are paddling on the Blue Way, I think 10 spaces is, uh, is actually a good number to shoot for. Well, I'll say I came through over the weekend by our trailhead at the Atkin River Park, and every parking space on the Spencer side was full. And then there were cars parked on the side of the road. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good. Joe, with this, uh, with our parking lot, um, and I'm already calling it our parking lot. <laughs> have <laughs> any um, any concern for the developer and the development of the property that they initially planned to build the townhouses there? Um, I don't think so because this is built or plant uh, proposed entirely to be on town owned land. Uh, when we originally were conceptualizing this and this prop proposal came about, we were working with the land trust. The land trust still owned the property at that time. And so Steve went uh, to considerable effort to work with the design engineer um, to build it to the standards that would be acceptable to the land trust. And then the, the development um, slowed down or uh, actually didn't happen or has not happened. And then we sort of picked up on the design and have just been looking uh, for opportunities to find funding for it. And this one popped out and it really kind of fits well. And I, you, you've heard me say uh, many times that uh, the, the, grant sort, the grant applications write themselves. It's, it's just lining up the project that the town has with, you know, the grant criteria of what the grants are trying to accomplish, grant programs. And so that, if you do that, and this one fits sort of 
monetarily in the number that we need. It achieves the goals of the grant program. And so I think this is a really um, a nice fit for us. The fact that it doesn't obligate the town to any matching funds is a benefit. And so um, I, I think this will be a, a, a good one to, to pursue if, if the board is willing to allow it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Board, any other questions? Okay. Joe, thanks for all your work on identifying this funding. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Uh, so, <laughs> sounds like Mr. Touche uh, <laughs> said, y'all need to do this. <laughs> well, that's, pretty, that's pretty much the way the email was, was, you know, this is, you need to apply for this. So. I'm glad to know there's somebody else watching out for us, too. That's great. That's correct. That's correct. So, board, uh, is there a motion then to authorize the manager and staff to apply for the, its, uh, this grant of up to $100,000 for the proposed Grants Creek Blue Way? So moved. Motion by Ms. Moody. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Sledge. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. All opposed? And that is approved unanimously. Thank you all. Again, thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Bye, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The next item is uh, some time for us to workshop the budget proposal that was brought to us by the manager at our um, regular meeting uh, back a few weeks ago. So with that, you each have your uh, budget notebooks. And so um, what I would like to do is we'll give the manager a few minutes to just make a few comments to kick us off. <laughs> and then open it up for board members um, to walk through any questions you might have, any uh, recommendations, things like that. We can we kind of take each one one at a time. Mr. Granzies. Thank you, Mayor and members of the board. And, and our finance officer, Heather Tan, is here. And uh, uh, I'll likely ask her to, to jump in uh, at, at some point whenever whenever. Uh, we have some additional information, I believe, that we'll be passing out. But um, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. And, and I've had the chance to talk with several of you uh, about questions you may have had. And this is certainly an opportunity to uh, continue the discussion about the budget and make sure that uh, we can get to a consensus uh, on uh, what the uh, recommended ordinance should look like in June, and um, as well as uh, for the public hearing that will be uh, happening in June as well. And uh, what the, the two two items that I wanted to draw, I guess, to your attention uh, before we get into the maybe the Q and A is that since the recommended budget, we had two items um, that have come about that we want to we're going to need to factor in. Um, one is that w our budget proposal had uh, factored in a state grant related to some uh, safety supplies. For the fire department and we found out that that application was not successful so we're currently looking at uh, what items we might be able to accomplish in the current fiscal year uh, that we were wanting to plan for uh, for next year and uh, the, the budget as recommended included uh, a certain amount of items and half of that amount was going to be offset by grant revenue so we've already planned for the expenditure it's just that half of the revenue to support that expenditure through the grant fund we know is not going to happen. So what if, was that grant request? I believe the amount was about 30, uh, I'm sorry, 15,000 to match. Our, our, our half was 17,600. So was it a one for one match? It was, okay. So we roughly 34,000 of equipment supplies that is in there. And again, the grant grant about 17,000 that what we'll look for is uh, what amount of that can we accomplish in the in the current year uh, based on available funds uh, and what might be needed then to, to figure out a way to fund uh, for next year these are needed supplies um, and uh, a lot of it is PPE materials and that sort of thing for our firefighters <clears throat> and then the other item that happened was we got our property and liability insurance renewal from the league and it came in higher than anticipated and that figure is in the neighborhood of fifteen thousand dollars or so 
that uh, we're going to need to accommodate. And uh, Ms. Can is passing out that information. And that's 15 k above the original projection. Above what we currently budgeted. Uh, so those are two, just two factors to be aware of that we will be working to, as we're making adjustments, those are adjustments that we're going to need to factor in. Yes, please. And uh, we, we do have a few questions about, about the renewal, but uh, we, asked, we asked questions and got some feedback about you know, why, why it's going up so much. And some of this is due to a statewide you know, trend on insurance. Um, there's some specific items they pointed to, including uh, more, more people, more vehicles, you know, more things to insure, but they also pointed to some prior year um, claims and losses and you know trends actually going all the way back to 2019 <laughs> that they're identifying as as part of this so um, so we're trying to work through this and, and it, we're hoping that it, there may be a way to adjust this factor but it, it appears that you know this is what it's going to be for the coming year so any any questions about about that I guess before we move on to other questions Peter, can you tell me one more time the name of the uh, specific insurance type that's going, that is causing the issue? Well, it's it's everything that was passed out here. But so in our budget, we have we have a property and liability insurance. Okay, thank you. Um, that's that's kind of where it's funded in this. We also will show workers comp and we'll show uh, group health. So it's not those uh, those pieces. It's the property and liability. Got it. Thank you so much, Peter. You're welcome. Well, glad, I guess I'm glad to know that my personal auto and property insurance. Glad it's not just going my up is not just mine. Well, it's yeah. across the board. Yeah, I talked to my agent today. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a 27 percent increase across the board. For that. Me. That. Somebody's. That you might, yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Peter, anything else related to? Please don't. Those were the were the overarching you know changes that have happened. Um, you know, and I know there there may be several questions. Uh, that y'all want to talk to or ask about or some things we'll have. Well, and I guess the big question is what do we foresee as the potential budgetary impact for next year as a result of this? I mean, what's, what's kind of the bottom line impact? We've got to cut some additional things for the proposed rate of what was previously proposed would have to go up even further, right? Yeah, right. Well, the... the so the the flexibility in in dealing with this will either come from uh, reducing other items, or for example, uh, you know, adjusting the the amount of fund balance that we're using to balance the budget. Uh, that's we haven't we haven't looked any at any particular solution at this point, just based on where we land on other budgetary items. But but those are. Those are the two kind of directions available that we could use to get get it back in balance. Okay. All right, board. We'll start um, and open it up for questions and feedback. We'll start on this end and work our way down to the sledge. We'll start with you. Um, well, I'm tried to make some notes and I don't know whether I've made good sense of them or not but anyway um, one of the things that's mentioned here is that we're not planning to host a lead for North Carolina um, person for this year um, what why or why not and what is our cost to do that would we be eligible for one do we need one um, you know obviously Sky's done a wonderful job and Ryan's done a great job for us too mm -hmm. why What's the what's the thought behind the process? 
Sure. Uh, we've hosted a fellow for three years, and, and it's, it has been a great opportunity. It's, it was, uh, the thinking was to, uh, you know, maybe allow other communities a chance to, uh, to be a part of it. And, uh, and we've had specific scopes of work that uh, we've been trying to accomplish. And I, I think just looking and when the when the application time came around this year, uh, we didn't necessarily identify a scope uh, to focus on with the fellow for next year. And you know, it's something we can revisit year by year. Uh, the the program we've we have budgeted between um, between you know ten and fifteen thousand dollars a year to uh, to fund that. And and the fellow is is largely subsidized. And what's what's happened each year is the the cost for that has actually come in a little better than we anticipated through uh, the school of government identifying additional grant funding, et cetera. So it's it's really been a fantastic program. We're glad to be a part of it. Um, one of the reasons, of course, uh, that we went from our, our original fellow Sky was a one. It, it's a one year deal, right? And the right. fellow could elect to extend that for a second year, which is what happened with Scott. And then she was ready to go off to grad school. And then we were looking for uh, a new fellow to focus on on um, our finance projects, which we've been working on with Ryan. Um, and he has elected to, he's ready to go off to grad school and he, that's where he's heading. So um, so that's part of it is that we, you know, if there was a, a mutual interest in extending for a second year with our current fellow, we likely would have uh, worked to continue that. But um, but yeah, that's that was kind of the thinking that went into that. But for, for the board's sake, we have planned that we are maintaining the MPA. We do, Inter yes, we are continuing, uh, recommending continued funds for the part time uh, MPA internship. Is that in the parks and recreation budget portion of it? or where does It's that in our administrative town hall. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, I think I've answered some of my own questions after digging a little bit deeper into it. But uh, we mentioned the um, the, uh, the reorganiz uh, not reorganization, the um, update for the compensation and co uh, compensation plan. Mm -hmm. Those numbers are not in this budget. Is that correct? They are included in the budget now. The so the the study. The, the funding for the study is in there, which was about seven thousand five hundred dollars, and but there are no implementation funds. In other words, you know, there's some amount that at the at the end of the study there will be some price tag of making pay adjustments, right. um, or pay scale adjustments, etc. Uh, we did not. Sometimes you can go in that up front and say, oh, we're going to set aside uh, half a million dollars or whatever the amount for for that, and. Uh, but just given the budget constraints we we're working with, uh, I didn't want to recommend that at this point. And that's something we can look at as we're get, going through the study, uh, depending how, how we're going through the year. If we think we might have uh, additional revenues that we can recommend a budget amendment, uh, that would be one way to handle it. But otherwise, it would be something we'd likely look, need to look to the next fiscal year to try to do an implementation process. Okay. Okay. Um, on the um, appendix D for the staffing summary, um, is the deputy part the de deputy fire chief? Is he considered a part time employee? That's is that correct. where the money for the part time employee goes? Yes. Okay. It's well, and there are there are some additional part time funds within the. Let me flip to the right page so I. In the part time. Okay, I'm sorry. So just to restate, I'll restate that at the microphone, but the. Um, the and we've gone we've gone back and forth about where the the funding for the that particular position. So excuse my error in saying it was in the part time, but um, but yes. Yeah, so the figure you see for part time does not include the deputy chief. That's factored into the regular salary line. Okay. All right. 
Um, I guess this is kind of a general overall question, but um, what happens when the ARPA money's all gone? <laughs> we have to finish using it by 2026, is that correct? That's correct, and we will we will have it spent well before then. Right. Um, the, so the way we've approached that is that for three fiscal years, meaning the year we're in right now, the prior year, right. and the next year, so we're right in the middle, we've programmed the funds into our budget to cover salaries. Right. That's freed up local funds then each of those years to do the items on our list of projects. So what it means is uh, we won't have the the feel of those extra funds to do things like what we see on our list, right? right? So it's not going to have a direct impact on our operations in terms of staff and that sort of thing because what we did was we came up with ideas for, oh, now that we have front funds freed up, we would normally pay staff, we can do some other things. Right. And of course, we've been able to leverage those funds uh, multiple times over uh, by using some of these funds to secure millions more in grants, et cetera. It's been a very beneficial investment for us, but uh, that's, the, that's the short answer uh, with the other part of, of course, we aspire to the uh, tax growth in our tax base that will, will give us uh, more, uh, more room to do some of these things that uh, really have been things for a long time that uh, our community has talked about and wanted and, and this this investment of these funds has really helped us uh, move faster and uh, down our, our list of uh, really important things. Okay. And, and I think that the, the big thing for us is to keep in mind that by and large, all of the supplanted funds that we were able to use, um, we've been able to achieve they've been kind of one-off projects, right. right? They're not recurring annual right. expenses. So yeah. that's a good thing. Be good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then one other thing, um, have we thought anything at all about the property down at the um, trailhead that was donated to us by the museum? Do we have any plans? Do we have any money in the budget to do anything with that? Or is that, do we have? My guess is that keeps Joe up at night thinking about what grants he can, <laughs> he can get for that. Okay. Yes, and, and so we, we do have programmed in some engineering funding uh, to help us continue to do those types of, uh, when the opportunities come along and we need to have some help from a consultant to do some, some planning or design, we have those funds built in, but we don't have any specific funds for that, uh, for example, uh, project of developing that piece of the Yakin River Park. I think the other thing with that is, you know, our hope is that we begin to see some development develop out there that, that yeah. spurs the need for us to move that part forward. And that's all I can think of right now. I may something else may come up, but I think that answers the questions that I had. Thank you. Mr. Muhammad. Oh, one oh. one other thing. I heard something and I don't know if there's I don't know if there's anything to this or not, but I was told over the weekend that the Department of Labor is making some kind of um, um, ruling about the Fair State Labor Standards Act exemption and the yeah. thresholds. Yeah. Yes, we are very uh, we are aware of that. Uh, there is one position that we were are going to have an impact, uh, and uh, that is it. It's actually the town clerk position is is one that is uh, caught up in this uh, rule change. So uh, what it would mean is. She gets a raise. Well, there's <laughs> so the the comp the comp study process may determine that, uh, but in the immediate uh, in the the immediate is that uh, there's two changes there's two waves of implementation for that and one is in July and one is in January right. and it comes into the January phase where uh, by then basically if there's not any change currently. Uh, to the uh, the way the position is classified, it would need to go from an exempt position to a non-exempt position, which would be mean, which basically means you're subject to overtime after 40 hours. And in for our staff uh, here in town hall, I mean, by department we either budget for paying out overtime or we budget or we don't. And it's 
by use of comp time. And that, that's the way we would handle it, you know, for our town hall staff that are, and that's the way we do handle it for non-exempt town hall staff. So there's not an immediate budgetary impact other than, you know, kind of the bigger picture. Okay. But the study will, um, yeah, that's part of another reason why it's good to, to have this study that's being recommended to make sure we're keeping up with the way our positions are yeah. classified. All right, Mr. Muhammad. Okay, my first question is, um, you know, considering that all departments aren't full to capacity as far as employees, how is that, you know, how does that affect the proposed budget that's in place? Yes, so uh, we do have a few vacant positions. We, we don't have as many as we used to, uh, which is a good thing. What we do in the budget is we budget as if we have no vacancies. So the funds are there for all of our positions. That's what gives us the ability to fill, fill a position. If we didn't have the funding in the budget, then we couldn't hire, recruit and hire somebody to, to be in that position, if that makes sense. Okay. Now with, with, the, with the increase increases within the budgets to this next fiscal year, um, <clears throat> as well as taxes, how is it that it can be explained in detail and like a self-explanatory mannerism to the residents with the increases that are taking place? Yeah. So, so how can we how can we communicate that message right. so it's easy to understand and understand where those dollars are going and increase yeah so yeah. i think that's something that we talked about you know i know we've done some things initially mm -hmm. to kind of help explain especially for the fire department to explain why we're why we're proposing that um but you make a great point is making sure right. that we can develop something that maybe more than we've done thus far to get that out there yeah. um especially ahead of the public hearing and everything that comes up um, in june yeah I I, I, the reason I asked that too is like because due to the the changes that we're making when it comes to fleet vehicles, which make okay. Due to the reason I asked that question is is you know due to the changes that we are making with the fleet to the vehicles and things of that nature, which make more sense to the bottom line in reference to the new vehicles or the staff that we have to hire to demand the the way that the town is growing. Some residents are, residents are asking valuable questions, and it makes sense in reference to the dollars that are being spent. So that's yeah. why I asked, you know, so they can understand clearly. And I know, you know, we just had a conversation about the grant that didn't go through for the fire department, and that money, if, you know, if such, we have to allocate those funds from somewhere mm -hmm. to get the equipment or to cover for that equipment, being that that grant wasn't in place, correct? Mm -hmm. So it, just in terms of our budget process and, and how we communicate, we you know, this is a long process. When we have uh, started it uh, with uh, attempting to have uh, kind of open forums uh, many months ago, as it was mentioned, related, specifically related to the, our fire department. And, uh, and of course, when the budget was, was uh, recommended, we, we made that available. Uh, in print, online, etc. We worked to get uh, that highlighted in the local paper. Thank you to the Salisbury Post for covering our budget, uh, and and so on. We uh, put we we put a as concise of a summary of it as we can, uh, of course, on our website. And um, you know that that's the challenge. And, and certainly, if anybody has any questions, please, uh, I'm I welcome any citizen to come in and ask questions. That's that's probably that. If you have a question about it and, and looking at what we've put together to summarize it doesn't answer your question, I'm very happy to uh, meet and talk about uh, any questions that so folks might have. I, I think what you're getting at, and I, I totally, totally get it, there is a large part of our community that isn't going to take the time to read through the budget narrative of course. the budget document yeah. that may not even, sorry Chandler, may not even read the information in the post about it and and we've done it in the newsletter too i think the big question is how can we give them that little bite-sized bit that's enough to 
have them interested in the budget to maybe make them read a little more and dig a little deeper or reach out and reach out to you and our staff or reach out to us to talk about it. But I think the big thing is how can in 30 seconds can they have a takeaway that the increase is because we have essential services that we have to provide largely due to our change in our fire department, but also for them to understand that in doing that, we've also had to cut some requests that our staff have asked for. Like we haven't been able to fund as many vehicles as we would typically on our fleet replacement yeah. schedule. Those type of things that they need to understand that I don't think, I think that the, the thought out there for a lot of people is, well, they're just, they're just buying whatever they want, right? They're just funding whatever they want. And that's not the case, right? We're funding what we have to, to provide those essential services, and we're funding what we have to in order to set us up for the future growth that we're about to experience, right? So that's where that investment part in our future comes in. But on the same token is we're not just willy-nilly buying things or buying cars and that sort of thing. We're working a plan. We have a fleet replacement schedule. We have a pavement, um, you know, pavement repaving plan. All those things, we're working our plan, we're working our strategic plan, and that strategic plan is what citizens five years ago now had significant input in into helping to shape that. And we're implementing that now. So how in 30 seconds can we communicate that to our public? And I think that's what you're getting at. I think a key example also is, you know, Peter shared that the fire department will be in talks about how to cut personal protection equipment budgets, which is a little frightening if we look at that. Um, and so how do we provide a top quality service to our residents while maintaining the safety of the people who provide it <clears throat> within a budget that everyone can afford? I mean, it's, it's the age old question, but I just think that's a key example of the fact that money is not being spent without very detailed thought and care for people um, and the hard-earned money that they bring home and would really like to keep as much as possible. Um, and I think the other thing, I, you know, somebody mentioned to me a week ago, you know, their comment to me was, I'm, I'm okay if my taxes go up as long as I feel like I'm getting something mm -hmm. in return for that. That's the big thing we've got to make sure, and we've, we've said it, is making sure that citizens feel like they're getting something in return for that. And that starts with making sure they understand, now with the budgeting process, what are they getting in return for that, right? And what are they not getting that we're maybe holding back on so that we don't have to raise taxes anymore than, we are, than we're proposing? Mr. Muhammad, anything else? That's it. I'm okay. Sorry. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Moody. Okay, you guys are going to forgive me if I'm about to ask the uh, new kid question. <laughs> <laughs> We've okay. all asked it, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure this has been uh, thoroughly discussed before I got here. So could someone fill me in on the 6th Street building? Uh, I know we've been most recently talking about abatement costs mm -hmm. for the asbestos. Um, do we have a time frame for when asbestos abatement has to be done for when construction has to happen is there some kind of a we may in fact have some kind of grant money or some type of funding that we have a time frame that has to be used but just in looking at uh money that we are potentially looking to spend for that i've been wondering does that have to happen right now or could we just kind of potentially have a little museum that sits over there and waits until a another year I don't know the answer Can I to that. that, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all asked that question yeah. at some point. So let me give you the rundown on the building. So basically, when we moved into this building, mm -hmm. this was, oh gosh, we've been talking, it's been over a decade that it's been planned. Mm -hmm. The reason why there was a space need study for our staff that was done about a decade plus ago um, and also an evaluation of that existing facility. What came out of that space needs assessment was that it was grossly undersized and grossly just not configured for our, our staff, our office work, and our, um, and our uh, police department. But it had great carpet. 
It had great, great I love great <laughs> carpet, especially the stain that was really? in the mayor's office. That Beautiful. was fantastic. It was great. Um, <laughs> but the other thing about that is that building, not only was it not suitable for our needs space-wise, it had severe structural issues. It was settling, there were foundation cracking, that sort of thing. And so uh, structurally, there's actually concern about the building, okay. which is why we've been hesitant when we've had some folks approach us about leasing and things like that. We've been very concerned about that. Also, the folks that have approached us about it, it would be a change of use. And um, some of those, I think there was a, a school that had requested uh, to use it. And obviously with HVAC ventilation and fire code and things like that, when you're talking school, it changes the game completely. Mm -hmm. So significant updates would, would, would have to happen. And so basically what the previous board had come to the conclusion was that building with the condition that it's in needs to be torn down. And the thought was the sooner we can tear it down, the sooner we can either begin to look at other options for how the town might need to use that space mm -hmm. or even look at options for potentially selling that for future development. Um, being in our downtown, it's basically an entire block or half a block at least. Um, and it's a very valuable, potential development area. So that was kind of the thinking. Um, and so I think the thing as far as the timeline, there's not a timeline and we could let it sit there. The thing that I think several of us have been talking about and pushing for is people want to see improvement in the community, especially downtown. Mm -hmm. And they want to see uh, the condition of buildings and things getting better. And the longer we let that building sit there, it's going to continue to deteriorate. And so we're not helping improve the situation that our citizens have asked for, we're actually making it worse. So that was the thinking behind that. What we didn't realize when we were talking about that was the significance of the asbestos, lead paint, those sorts of things that were in the building. I think it was all in the back of our minds that it was probably gonna be there like everything else in Spencer that's old when you touch it. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing I don't think we realized was just the expense in the demolition that was gonna be so you know, the, question, the question is, yes, it's something we could hold on. The question is, the longer we hold, the more expensive it gets. That's just a given. And so it's gonna become more expensive to abate and tear down a building that's in even worse condition next year or the year after or the year after um, than it is right now. Thank you, that was a very thorough explanation. Mm -hmm. and, and the suggestion at this point, and we, we talked about this last time, is to is to go ahead with the abatement. Right. Uh, we're That's not, the first we're, step. We don't have demolition funds programmed into the budget, unfortunately. That was one of the things that had to get cut out. Uh, but in the meantime, it would be usable for our public safety staff for training purposes uh, after the abatement is, is complete, which is good. Um, and. And, but yes, that second phase of the demolition, we, we will have to come back to uh, once we can identify a way to fund that. Unless anybody has a bulldozer and wants to. I'm pretty handy with around. breaking stuff, so you'll let me in there. And we'll probably figure it out right. by accident. That, that, was, that was the rationale. Mm. That plus, uh, you know, once it's gone, we'll wind up with kind of a clean usable lot that in the meantime is a nice green space with some parking around it. Um, so it, the purpose would immediately without the building there be better. And then if it could be reused for town use uh, or for private development, those would be even better. But yeah. in the short term, that I, was... I think the reality is without the building there is a more usable space. Yep. I certainly see the long-term potential yep. just in looking at this short-term budget. Yeah. The temptation to scratch that number off was strong. Well, in the understand, but yeah. the long term potential yeah. sounds great. And yep. The, and one thing I just want to make sure you understand we're not talking about any funding for that in next year's budget. The, the funding that we're talking about uh, putting towards the abatement is in the current year, repurposing current year funds for Thank that. Thank you, Peter. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That changes my question. Yeah. Thank you. So, and so then the thought would be, you know, potentially not next year, but the year after we may be able to do something. The other thing is there are some demolition grants out there. Um, 
but yes. he is having that abatement done. There are grants, but they do have some time frame right. restrictions. Uh, for example, the North Carolina Department of Commerce has a grant that I believe could provide up to maybe 75000 uh, for demolition, uh, but it would require that it could not be used, it, it cannot be used for three years, which we're almost to that time frame on, on before the demolition, and then it cannot be used for public use for at least three years after. So if for some reason we determine that this would be usable for the public, then we wouldn't want to pursue that because we just, it just wouldn't fit. So a question on, on that, on the same thing. Uh, the abatement we're talking about is, is um, some of the leading and the windows and asbestos and that sort of thing. And tot asbestos tile. It, it's, tile mainly, uh, it's, a, it's mainly removing window caulk um, not the windows themselves, but the caulk, uh, and then dealing with pulling most of the flooring out of the building, whether it be tiles, Tile carpet, adhesive, that was... adhesives, et cetera. Those are the, that's the majority of the abatement. Okay. So we're not knocking the windows out. No, there, it would okay. still be secured with windows that's, that's and doors. And, I mean, question. It just wouldn't quite be as weatherproof, I guess, as uh, with the caulk in place, but yeah. and so I'm going to, going to enter the comment that a former board member would have said that we're paying for the sins of our fathers now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that's got to be done. <clears throat> All right, anything else, Ms. Moody? No, thank you. Okay. All right. Mr. Miller. Well, the uh, our town manager had a long discussion yesterday, and I, I've got all my questions answered as far as that goes. I've got some comments and I've got some suggestions on how we cut the budget. That's that's the main thing I think we need to talk about. Okay. If you don't mind, if I can go ahead and talk. Floor is yours. Thank you. Um, Spencer is a blue collar town. It's always been a blue collar town and always will be a blue collar town. We have a lot of people here that are retired. We have a lot of people here that are working paycheck to paycheck. I am concerned about them because we as representatives on this board need to think about maybe the silent majority, these people that are not, cannot understand what we're talking about up here. Because yes, we're doing a good job. We're budgeting what we should be. But the average Joe living in Spencer does not understand this. You understand that? And for us to be concern and doing a good job. You need to think about that. Uh, our property values are going up because we're building new houses here in town. That is being built, uh, being lived in by young couples that are trying to get started. Now, we just took a, they just took a hike this, this last past year, the county with their adjustments and everything else. And being very conscientious about what we're trying to do. I'm all for the firemen, don't get me wrong. I've, I've voted for that and I still think that's the way to go. It's like you, like we said before, as long as we can see results, it's, it's good for us, okay? But we gotta do something about getting the budget down. And I talked to Peter yesterday about some things and we talked about some things that we I would like to see done, and I I can talk about it later or I can talk about it now or however you want to do it. But I do think we cannot propose a seven cents tax on our citizens in our community this year, this coming year. I think it's too much. Yeah, I mean I think now's the time to go ahead and talk through what recommendations you have. All right. <clears throat> Recommendation number one is our school safety grant of twenty thousand uh, dollars. I'm I'm a supporter of the school system. I think it's a great system. Um, I think we're doing going above board trying to do what we uh, what we're doing this coming year. I don't know. Don't get me wrong. I maybe I'm old fashioned. But I don't know if this money is being spent the right way. I don't know. I hope to attend some of these events and see whether we are spending this money. 
and we've committed to that money for this past budget, and I'd like to see it. Of course, we're going to honor that as far as that goes, but I don't think we can continue to offer $20,000 each year for the schools unless I see a desperate need. If they need something, I think we'll, we'll be glad to help them, but I think this is something that we can offer one time, see how it works, and then go from there and say, because I think they really had a hard time trying to figure out what they were going to do with this money. So and I'm not blaming anybody on the staff or anything like that because, but I just, I'd rather see us save that $20,000 and give it to our taxpayers. That's, that's, a, that's one suggestion. Okay, you want to go to number two? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess before, let's, any feedback from the board on that or questions? Well, we won't really see any results of it until later in the year. I mean, you know, as far as. Right. You know, right. And so, I mean, that being the case, it would allow us to make, I mean, it could be something we do every other year, right? Because right. I mean, the reality is that type of money, it takes them some time to plan right. for it, right? And so we can assess, I mean, I think that's reasonable that we assess how things go and, uh, you know, then we can build it into the following budget year if needed. The budget implication is that that's approximately a little more than a half cent reduction mm -hmm. on the tax rate. We th didn't we say thirty six thousand was thirty seven thirty seven thousand yeah. was the penny. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any any other feedback? Yeah, can say about that. And, and what I'll say just so we you know of course this is your this is your budget at this point to do what feels appropriate for the board as a whole right uh when we first talked about that school grant uh, in my mind maybe it was a one-time grant i heard some feedback uh in in our discussions over the last few months that, that sounded like it was a priority item to try to fund again so therefore it was in there um and so i think of course, that's a reasonable approach to think about, uh, you know, just letting this be one time for now and see what what comes of it. And if it's something we want to continue with some other frequency going forward. I think Mr. Howe and, and uh, Ms. Seacrest were both very favorable toward that. So I think it would be good to hear their comments about it. Well, and I think we heard from him, you know, he provided some insight knowing he wasn't going to be oh, here okay uh, yeah last yeah. at the last meeting okay. and what he said was you know if we need had to cut that okay. that would be one area i, I guess yeah i was zoned out at that point i, no. I would offer a comment that as someone who comment. and i always hesitate as the new person so much amazing work has been done by this board and i have been a very um grateful citizen of spencer prior to joining this board, so I never want to backtrack on the amazing work that's been done. But I, prior to coming here, didn't we just recently hear the presentations yeah. from, so I was listening to them thinking, if I'm being honest, I was a little confused about what they, the use of the money had to do with school safety. I was a little confused because it almost sounded like community engagement to me. And I was like, not not bad because I love community engagement and I think investing in kids is a great investment. But if we are trying to cut something from the budget, in my mind, I'm like, well, because I do believe school safety can absolutely always be improved. And I'm, you know, I think if I had kids to send to school, maybe that would be uh, something that kept me up at night. But I do remember thinking that, that I was a little like, huh, thinking it was going to be a little bit more safety related. So just feedback, I guess, that I was like. And I think the initial intent as we started talking about it was looking at potentially partnering with the school district to pilot some type of program related to, um, you know, gang resistance education, drug resistance education, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and that was explored, I think. They were definitely headed in the right direction, don't right. get me wrong, and I enjoyed the presentations. I think the money will definitely benefit the schools, yeah. but I was like, hmm. So the, the three areas that made it, you know, of course, the funding happened uh, based on discussions last year. The, those three areas of, of uh, gang resistance, human trafficking awareness 
and teacher support and teacher and staff support at the schools. Those are the three priority areas that at this time last year were, were kind of risen up as this is what we wanted to go to. So then staff put together a grant program to uh, spell that out a little more. It was presented and approved uh, in the uh, December timeframe, I believe, and then we had the grant cycle, et cetera, that we asked for proposals that went along with that framework. We asked them in their proposals for how they'd use the funds to cover two of those three priority areas. Right. And so the activities, they are kind of event, a lot of the, uh, what we heard about were events, I think geared towards uh, providing alternative activities for, for the students to take part in rather than some of these negative activities that we're um, trying to avoid in the community. Uh, but it, it, does that yeah. make sense? I, so it certainly, uh, that, yeah, and don't get me wrong, worthy causes. Yep. I'm not knocking them. I'm just, in my mind, I'm going through. Not, so, I mean, I think, you know, they've got a good plan. Let's evaluate the slept and use funding that's mm -hmm. been allocated. See how it goes. See how it goes. Uh, because in reality, they'll, they'll do these events. Then there's going to be a period of time of kind of debriefing on how they've gone. Our staff, obviously, will meet with them to find out um, you know, where they had successes, if there are opportunities for improvements. Maybe they haven't gone through it, see a different opportunity for how they could use funding in the future. Um, but the reality is that's going to be over a year before we get all that feedback and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So I think for us to, to take that out of this upcoming budget and reassess going into next year's budget is a reasonable, reasonable request. Mm -hmm. Board, you generally okay with that? I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay. Number two. Mr. Miller. <laughs> All right. Suggestion number two. Now, this is one I thought was a great idea, and I think everybody else they thought was a great idea, but unfortunately, I'm looking at ways to cut the budget. And Peter put together a budget of what we call an active living coordinator, which is basically a person in charge of our parks and recreation. And this person would start in January 1st. And that budget would be $32,612. Um, I like the idea, but I don't think we can afford it. And I, that's simple as it can be. And I, th I mean, that's, that's a great question. It's something we've talked about. The board's made, wanted to make a priority. Um, My personal opinion is we absolutely need it with everything we have going on from not just from the facilities that we have and, and parks and things like that, but for, for some of the large events that we have that we're asking a group of volunteers to do a whole, whole lot when it comes to planning mm -hmm. certain things to have somebody that can focus on helping with that process uh, for some of those big events that we do, I think is important. The question of if we can afford it, that's a great question. But the reality is, at some point, we're going to have to afford it. And when's that going to be? Is it this year? Is it next year? The reality is the budget implication is going to be the same. And so that's a question we've got to figure out is, is this a priority for us or not? All right. Can I say something? Yeah. All right, I agree with you 100%. Don't get me wrong, okay? Um, but to pay, and, and it sounds like this person, male or female, has got their hands full, but we don't even know what their job's gonna be. So how can we, I know, I know Peter suggested that we need to get a board together, a recreation board together to to list the responsibilities and duties of this person. Mm -hmm. But I'm really having a hard time explaining to people, hey, we're going to put out $32,000 for a person. We don't really know what they're going to do. Well, I mean, I can tell you 20 things that I think that they should well, do. <laughs> but would that, would that fill six months of work of work? Yeah. I, okay. I, 
Okay, I'm not going to argue with you, but I really have a hard time understanding. So that. just think about some of the assets that we have that are, I would say, underutilized at the current point in time, right? Yeah. So Eighth Street Ballpark. Yeah, I agree. Um, and you know, working to to better schedule and plan and utilize that, uh, assisting with our Winter Fest um, event that we do, we've got very limited summer activities planned. That's something that we. Absolutely. We would like to have, but that Mr. Morgan charged us with before he left the board. Yeah, but the question <laughs> is whether kids would actually come out and support. It. I, you know what? But we you're talk, involved in scouts. You know what it's like to get kids to be involved. I, we're asking not just kids, said. I mean, this is overall community. I mean, it's well, senior I living. That. It's getting our seniors together and out and active. Um, it's partnering with our uh, Rufty Homes folks to to get seniors out and active and just making sure that we have stuff going on out at the river. I, I mean, I, I don't think feeling finding stuff for this person to do or what their job description will be. I don't think that's the issue, right? I, I, I have the utmost confidence that we can, that that person will be busy. They'll be busy with the park process out here uh, as well. If we could ever get that under construction. Um, the question is, and it goes back to it, can we afford it? Can I think personally, long term, we can't afford not to. The question is, and for the board is, is it something we can afford this year? Or do we say, we hold off on that this year, we get our committee together, we develop the job description over the course of this year, and then we plan to bring that person on board in July. I mean, we can even post the position with the in, uh, in the spring of next year, with the intent of bringing that person on in July of 2025. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention in regard to that is that in looking at applications for grants through the part of people, one of the things that it seems to me that they give high points to is that you have somebody who is a Parks and Recreation individual. Yes, that is true. And yeah. that helps to get you higher scores when they're looking at grant opportunities. So. I, th I think that's one thing that's a plus in putting someone in a position. You, you know, you talk, Steve, about getting kids involved. I mean, for that matter, just getting the community involved. True. We, can, I, we I, have a hard time doing that. Right. And I think that's, if you look at what's missing, you look at other successful communities where they, they thrive and that sort of thing, they've got a person that coordinates that. I agree. And that's what we're missing right now. I agree. We've got yes. facilities, we're just not utilizing them to their full potential. I think it's I think it's wonderful, but I'm I'm just I'm questioning the cost. And you're right to. I mean it's it's just, a big chunk. It's a new uh, position. It's absolutely something if we're looking at if we as a board collectively feel that we need to trim, that's definitely one of the right things to be asking. I want to make sure I'm reading this correctly. The way we have it listed is the 32,612 is the annual salary and we have it listed as we are planning S salary well so that that's worth half a year. Half it's a salary year. and benefits. And benefits. So be 60. Salary. Remember. I'm going to ask another dumb question because I already know the answer to this because I know you've <laughs> done your homework times 7. Is that a competitive starting salary for a parks and recreation? specialist in this area so we haven't that had it uh, fully that studied a lot of work. that would we, put them on a 22 uh, um, classification grade 22 well with the the figure that 32 figure you're seeing is salary and benefits, and benefits. So so I believe we have it, all that yeah. too. I believe which we is, have this one slotted at grade which is approximately 16. what 40 percent above and it's I, yeah, I think that's in the ballpark. Sixty percent would be salary, forty yeah. percent would be benefits. But the uh, okay. when we previously talked about this staff need, the idea I think was we, we need a director, right? We need a mm -hmm. recreation director. Mm -hmm. I think as a starting place, this is not that position. This is somebody that's more of a front line working with activities. It's a more of an entry level position. Yeah. Uh, you said I, like maybe like a coordinator or something until they have a team to work under them. Yes. So, so I, I do think that this is a good, you know, this is our best estimate at this point without doing a full position study to, to, um, to have it exactly nailed down. 
but well, I, that person would also be able to be involved in some of these things that we have going on, like the park is being built, and like um, the Carter House, uh, right? That they can be involved in that yes. planning process as we start programming what that might be with the grant yeah. money that we've gotten. Yep. I absolutely that, see that the work exists. The yeah. overarching idea is to uh, activate our spaces and facilities with programming and events and and those types of things. So that's the that's the overarching point of the position. Steve, I think for me, the, the key takeaway, like why I, I'm so adamant about it, is we have to reinstill some life and vitality in this community. And I think that's one of the ways to start to do that. I understand completely. Here's, here's my, here's what I'm worried about a whole lot, is that if right now we're talking about seven cents on, on the dollar or whatever, and what we already figured out that it's really going to be now, according to these two items, it's seven about seven and three quarter percent now. I don't want to see a lot of for sale signs in Spencer moving out because they can't afford to live, much less to rec to have recreation. So that's something you got to think about. That absolutely is, and I would I would challenge that in the surrounding us, where else are they going to go that's cheaper? That's Salisbury's proposal, that's, 66. That's the, th that's the one thing Spencer's got going for it. It is affordable, I think. Now, it is. It's more affordable than anybody else around. Well, that's right. That doesn't make it affordable, okay. but it's but it's cheaper than everybody else around. That yeah. doesn't make it affordable. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's 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 a hard sale. It doesn't it mean that sale. we're unnecessarily taxing, but it does mean that everyone is facing very challenging economic circumstances right now. Other communities are also making these very so, challenging. Sure. Let me ask the board this, right? You know, we talk about all right, the value of that is essentially one cent just a little bit less than one cent on the tax levy, okay? So whatever that ends up being based on the math that, that you did for the average increase for an average tax um, homeowner. You know, the question for the board is, do we feel like having this position for six months this year, do we feel like they're gonna be able to provide our citizens with that value or more on the tax levy? I mean, that's ultimately what it comes down to, right? Are they going to be able to provide more value to quality of life within our community than the approximately one cent on the tax levy that's going to hit all of our citizens? Which is, for the average, is $28 for the year. You know, it sounds cheap. It sounds, but... Everybody on this board and everybody in this room can afford it. But again, like I said, I'm trying to defend some of these people that can't afford it. I, that that twenty eight dollars might make the difference. That twenty eight dollars might make the difference. I get it. But that twenty eight dollars might also make the difference between new growth in our town. And people wanting to come in and build, wanting to come in and fix up homes, um, not having that type of quality of life might scare people away. And that's what scares me. And growth brings us tax revenue and income in the coming years, which keeps us from having to make these challenging decisions. It's chicken or egg, years. right? I think everybody's waiting for the so-called development out of Long Ferry and all that, or out here at the housing development out here. It's happening. I it's mean, happening, but it unfortunately, is. we're not going to experience any revenue from that this year, and probably maybe probably not, not even next year. Probably not. And I've been cheering them on. I'm going to start tailgating out there. Well, that's good. <laughs> but it's, I understand. There's two sides to it. I agree 100%. But I gotta go agree the other way as well. So I, yeah, I mean, I, I, well, that I mean that's the thing, right? We were elected, despite who voted for us and who didn't. When we were elected, we were voted in to serve all people mm -hmm. of Spencer, regardless of who they are or what their economic situation is. I, I get it. You've made, you've made <laughs> I get excellent it. points. All right. You're not wrong. 
You ready for number three? Yep, sure. Well, hold number on. Three. We, we, we got to get the consensus okay. of the board on this one. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to hear from each person. Let's go to Ms. Lynch. Steve, I understand your point, but I think it's somebody we need. I really do think that it's important to have somebody to coordinate some of the things that we need to be doing for this community, that we're, um, we've got a lot of stuff out there. We've got a lot of parks. Um, you know, we, I guess our, our, our um, public works folks oversee a lot of what's going on there, but it would be nice if we had somebody to sort of um, organize events. And right now, I guess we really don't have a staff person who's helping with Winterfest because that was something that Sky was involved with from the staff standpoint. Um, yeah, you know, we could do a lot more with the uh, Stand Back Forest to bring people there to you know give them information and and have have events there that sort of thing. Um, we probably could do more with Library Park if we had somebody who was um, promoting it. You know, right now Beverly does a couple of things a year in the park. Um, but it could be bigger, I think, and bring more people in. I don't know. Mr. Muhammad said he was going to take over some of the activities. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. When, when are all these summer activities going to start? It's not summer yet. Feels like it. It's getting close, though. <laughs> Mr. Muhammad, thoughts? Oh. Um, Honestly, to piggyback off what Patty was saying, you know, Joel and Public Works, they do pretty much do those things down, and I think that it would lessen up some of their duties, and then also it may generate more revenue for the town or possibly open up doors for more grants and things of that nature if we had someone in that position, um, preferably someone who is, you know, knowledge-based with that, you know, having prior knowledge or you know, being <clears throat> from that background, but um, yes, more events for children, more events for adults. So it would be great. I mean, and especially instead of just letting the parks sit there and with the new buildings that we're putting in position, why not? <laughs> and and to your point, you know, Joel and his staff do a fantastic job keeping up our mm -hmm. facilities. But that's the extent of their role right. is to for upkeep and yeah, maintenance. Yeah. We, what we don't have is that person that actually plans and activates those spaces. Right now, we're relying on outside groups really to do that. Um, with some of the events, you know, an example would be Bay Street Ballpark. Right, we're relying on um, you know the Cal Ripken League folks to actually activate that space, and yeah, they do a good job with their league and some of the tournaments that they've. Done, but the reality is there is a lot of the year that that park sits unused. Yeah. So, um, anyway, good points. Um, I've said enough. Yeah, you have. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Miss Moody. Um, I uh, can really see both sides of this, and I want to say, as a single income household who has a really uh, sometimes strenuous full-time job and a lot of side jobs that I work to pay the bills. Um, I know that, what did we say, $28 for this six month position. I know that sometimes that really can make a difference and I don't want to discount that for some people. And so, Mr. Mayor, I don't want to annoy you, but I almost want to withhold my decision because I think that if we can make some changes elsewhere, then I really support this this position. I I completely see the vision. I think it would be amazing for this community and our growth and providing that quality product that we want to bring to our citizens. But I think that if we're unable to make adjust, adjustments in other areas, then can we 
put a Band-Aid for six months and carry on for six more months and save people, it is only $28. But if, you know, I just can't stand the thought of someone missing a meal for us to, to have that. I can't stand the thought of me going to a, a community event at the park and someone going to bed hungry. You know what I mean? And so I want to say that I'm in favor of it, but I also think we need to make a few adjustments to the budget. And so maybe we look at some of uh, Mr. Miller's other ideas and see, I'm and right. I will withhold. I'm running, I'm running out of ideas. I will withhold mine. <laughs> You've got like five or six other ideas, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to read them. We'll so we get rid of them. Get rid of our town. I really well, you're over here. I do, I do support <laughs> the right position, <laughs> but uh, he ain't doing nothing but doing it. You want to go out there and do it? I can tell you, I'm the cheapest thing in this place. <laughs> <laughs> If you're thrifty, you can feed a family for 28 bucks for several days. I mean, that's a lot of money for some hey, people. I'm going to ask the board that question again. You might not want the answer <laughs> about how much how, how much value they're getting at it. <laughs> well, yeah, framed it differently. <laughs> uh, all right, Mr. Miller. Well, you know how I feel. What uh, we know. Okay. Uh, what other great suggestions? Do you, you know have? what I'm worried about. If you hire somebody, it's going to be somebody right out of college, probably, for that amount of money. And you, and it sounds good that, and I'm all for expanding things at Library Park and doing things at uh, the ballpark and everything else. But I think you need somebody older to do something like that to be able to work with it, unless you got a heck of an advisory board that really will work with this guy. And that's what I'm worried about. Is it really going to be worth it as far as that goes? I'm not going to argue it's pros and cons. I'm for it, but I'm against it. It's good for the community, but it's it's not financially. So for the time being, I'm going to say no at this time. But I can I can deal with it. You know, I'm not I'm not dead set against it, so let it go like it is. How about that? <laughs> Well, I think Ms. Moody had a great, great suggestion. We kind of know where everybody stands. Um, there is not consensus. It's definitely split. Um, so let's look at what other potential cost savings or cuts you have. Unfortunately, this keeps going down on, on the items and everything else. Unfortunately, I'm also cutting items that I am close to as far as that goes. Kyle Harris is going to be mad at me in just a minute because I've already told Kyle about this. Um, Kyle is doing a really good job with community development, okay? And we undertook a project with the Jefferson Street Park. And Kyle really did a good job. Kyle, I'll commend you on that. You did a great job. I'm sorry I couldn't stay for the whole presentation. He's got Joe working with him, and they came up with a lot of great ideas. And that's kind of an eyesore to me there right on Jefferson Street. And I'd like... I push for this project as much as I can. And Kyle has put out a budget of $6,000 for this new park. Is that correct? Yeah. And my impression was basically we we're going to try to do some donations, basically donations from plants and stuff like that, uh, have a few soil variety in. But I was hoping this would be a project that we could do in several years instead of and I realize you're asking six thousand dollars. Six thousand dollars is not going to go a long way in one year. But I am suggesting, excuse me, you might get cuss me out, but I am suggesting to cut that budget from six thousand to three thousand to help him on that. And I'm, Kyle's good, and I think he can also work help. Joe will help you with grants. And I personally, if I have to, I'll get up there and do all I can to help you out as far as that goes. But I'm trying to save money, okay? And I'm sorry, don't get mad, don't get mad at me. But I'm suggesting that we cut that budget uh, 
he's got, I think he's got to set aside $6,000 for Jefferson Park, and I'd like to cut it down to 3000 And if I may, I think it's 5000 that we've got programmed okay. in for that project at this point. Okay, it's 5000 uh, yeah. Okay. We cut it either 2000 What do you think? Two or 3000 Sure. Yes, go ahead. Thank you very much. But yes, yeah, so the Community Appearance Commission has been interested in making improvements to the Jefferson Street Park, which is behind Bojangles. Um, we've done a design charrette, which uh, Mr. Miller mentioned. Uh, we had the CAC come out there to explore some potential improvements. We do anticipate from the beginning this would be a long term project right. over many budget years. I don't think a reduction in the budget would seriously impact the long term uh, plan for that park. It would just Take us a little bit longer, but I think that's fine. The uh, I think the CAC would be open to a reduction in that particular item. We could pull in other sources of potentially donations, rely more heavily on volunteers. That six thousand was primarily for things like signage, improving and replacing furnishings like benches, trash cans, putting in trees, shrubs, etc. Um, actually, we had planned to present a more detailed plan to the board at some point uh, in the near future. Um, but I guess the short of it is, I do think the CAC would be okay with reduction in that budget um, because it was always anticipated to be a longer term plan. If that makes sense. <coughs> Thank you, Kyle. You're a good sport. We are in the sausage making now. <laughs> We're talking $2,000 cuts. Well, I, but they're all important. I'm Every trying. little bit helps. So I just had I just had an epiphany right. back on our previous discussion because my thing with Parks and Rec person is I don't want us to continue to kick the can down the road because we've talked for several years about needing this position. So a compromise could be that we budget for three months of that position, effectively cutting that thirty two thousand in half so that we would post the position with the intent of bringing somebody on uh, in the fourth quarter of, ne of this coming fiscal year. And then what that does is it commits us to keeping that person into the next fiscal year. So it helps us move the needle. We're still able to cut half a cent, <laughs> half a cent off the tax levy yeah. by doing that. And, and then we've got that person, right? We've, we've, as a board, we've moved the needle forward. We've made that position. We've committed to it moving forward into the next year. I mean, what are the thoughts on that? I like the confidence. Well, Joe was talking about a grant that was due in September, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't, but we actually wouldn't be putting this person in place until January. Right. So that right. wouldn't make that wouldn't make any difference yeah. with the with that I next mean, grant they, schedule. Yeah. This next grant yeah. series. And, and that would yeah. give us time to get the to get the advisory board in place, let them work through job description and and the other thing I think that we need their input on is to go through all of our assets and even do some trips around town and mm -hmm. you know, determine where where the needs are for this person to plug in. We've all sat here and come up with a whole host of things, but I'm sure we're missing a bunch. Yeah. Well, and when I look at the uh, when I look at the actual um, expenditure breakdowns, the salary wage uh, for that person is twenty two nine. So the rest of the thirty two is um, benefits. Right. So. I don't have a problem with that. If we can hire somebody that late in the year, or early in the year, as far as I guess, I mean. You would, again, I think you're going to hire somebody out of college. I bet we'll prove you wrong. Right? I, like I said, I'd like to see a more experienced person, but that's fine. It's no, I don't have no problem. I mean, yeah, the other option is somebody that's retired. That's yeah, that's what I was a, thinking. Yeah, yeah somebody who's possible. looking for a, a That's possible. We also don't want to discount the amazing uh, town staff we have here who will guide and uh, lead our new staff <laughs> member. Who are you talking about? Peter and Anna. Oh. <laughs> All right. The way I go, if we eliminate the school grant, which is twenty thousand dollars, 
if we eliminate the half of that salary, which is sixteen thousand dollars, roughly, mm -hmm. and take two thousand dollars from uh, from Kyle, that's thirty-eight thousand. So we have eliminated a penny. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we found out it's going to cost us three quarters of a penny more than what we started. Not necessarily. Well, not necessarily, right? but I hope. Right. I mean, we. I mean, the, seven we're talking cents about the same, back to six cents, maybe or maybe more than that. Right now. What I'm saying is, we got to show. We've got to show that we are working with the people that we're trying to cut the budget because, again, my comment is the average Joe is going to say, "All right, you bought a new town hall, you got a new garbage truck, you got a new fire truck coming." You got, uh, we've already had a comment, this is not a good comment, but uh, we got too many police officers, you know, yeah. as far as they go. That's what everybody's seeing. So we've got to show that we are trying to work with the community and help them. So we've got to cut that budget. If, if I, and I would agree, but I'm also going to push back because what I'm going to push back on is all these things that we're doing are also showing the community that we're trying to help them. But the average person don't see it. Then we need to open I their eyes. I understand that, but but it doesn't. It, it, the average person doesn't see it. That's an optics thing, right? No. That's not a don't make it happen thing. That's a we've got to do a better job of communicating that. Because the reality, Steve, is that for years we've been in that mentality, and because we've been in that mentality, it's held us back as a town. It's held us back from reaching our full potential. I and agree. that we can't fall back into that trap again. I agree. That's the question. Three letter word. And I think it's I think it is. It's going it's incremental, it's incrementally increasing the tax rate like we're doing. And it's also taking stock and being very judicious about what we are adding and what we're not, and cutting out things like you like you recommended. But I also think it's it's being able to do that until we get to the point that the future development that we have on the books hits our tax tax revenue, and it's going to happen. But it's not going to happen. It won't continue to happen. What what is going on now? What's broken ground? That'll happen. But if we pull back as a town, what's going to happen is those developments, those sorts of things, they're going to shy away from Spencer like they've done for decades. And that terrifies me. I would say also, I don't think it's just, and I know I haven't lived here my whole life, I'm a transplant, but I don't think it's just held us back from reaching our full potential, but we are working so hard to bring businesses to empty, abandoned storefronts, homes that have sat abandoned. That happens when there is no progress, when there is no development, when people are just left stagnant, when communities do not invest in themselves. And so I think a responsible, slow plan with intentionality is what helps Spencer thrive and remain an amazing community. Otherwise, eventually we just cease to exist. If we never make any changes, then generations later nobody's left there is no property value everybody's left everybody moves on and we see that happening all over the country and i think that the thing with unfortunately we've backed into a corner of not really being able to do that incremental increase that we've talked about that you mentioned and methodically and planned Chief Lang, I'm not going to throw you under the bus, but you know the big the big elephant in the room is that we are having to make a significant change in how we offer our fire service, and that I mean ultimately that is what is driving this, mm -hmm. and it's something that we've all sat <coughs> here and supported wholeheartedly. We know it has to happen, and so you ask how, that's that's how, right? And if we don't do it, it means we risk losing our ISO two rating. It means we put our citizens at risk of their homes burning down because we can't respond in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. It puts our staff in danger because they're understaffed. 
I mean, I, that's what this is. That's what the increase is. It's all around staffing related to the fire department. There are other little nuances, but that's the big piece. Yeah. And, and thank goodness this board has been supportive of it because <clears throat> it's got to happen. It, yeah. it, there's no other way around it. We've evaluated other solutions. We've tried to get grant funding, right? This is one we're going to have to do. And we're going to have to, as a community, do it together. I sat on my porch <clears throat> Tuesday a week ago and watched the house across from me burn. And I watched our guys get there. And there were two on the truck. The guy following the truck got hit in an intersection and was delayed by the accident. And thank God there were other companies there. I think there were seven or eight companies that came in mutual aid. But to sit there and watch that, and I mean, it was pouring rain during the whole time. Our power was off because the, the lines to the house, the electrical lines burned to, and um, knocked the transformers out. So we had no power over across the street. But to watch those guys work, I mean, that if I could give them a million dollars, I would give them a million dollars because I watched that. And it's horrible to sit and watch it happen and not be able to do anything. And I mean, you know, if we have to, we have to find ways to fund the things we have to do for this community. And, and Steve, I agree. I mean, there there's some nice to haves, and then there's some half to haves. And I would say, fire department, which is a big chunk of it, that staffing model is a half to have. I'm not disagreeing with that whatsoever. I, I fully support the fire department. It's not. It's not. That's not the issue. Yeah. It, that's not the issue. And I do want to just maybe offer the context that uh, we we were talking when we were originally forecasting this about seven and a half cents uh, of an impact uh, when things which would you see before you uh, wound up being you know as recommended and of course I think we've had some good discussion that's going to bring it beyond seven cents that was recommended but that that came in uh, you know accomplishing the, the goals, the priorities related to fire and other areas as well. Um, so I just want to, I do want to offer that uh, context and also that you know, not everything that was requested uh, was funded. So we certainly wanted to be uh, practical in what was being recommended and, and not just uh, you know, ask for everything under the sun, of course. It, but it, yeah, this is the, this is the, this is the process and this is, this is a good process that we're able to have these discussions and this is what helps the community understand uh, the hard decisions and and uh, but at the end of the day we are uh, working towards a collective vision uh, and key priority items and uh, you know we the whole point is to figure out what we can fund uh, on a year by year basis I, I did have one other question about a line item and I forgot to ask it earlier um, under the uh, governing body, uh, under capital outlay, nonprofit grants, 98750, is that the grant for the community, uh, community health care? What is, what is that? Yeah, that was like 2,500, I think. What is, what is the other, uh, the nonprofit, the nonprofit grants, 98750? Yes, so that, uh, that figure, uh, includes the, the community health center grant pass through from commerce, seventy-five thousand. Okay, that's as yeah. well as our local contribution into that, which uh, we're splitting with East Spencer, right. but it's about thirty-seven, three thousand seven hundred fifty, and then the remaining would be the twenty thousand school safety and support grant. So that collectively is what reaches the ninety-eight okay. okay. seven fifty. I, I, I just I just wasn't sure where that all that figure came from. <clears throat> Got anything else up your sleeve? Nope. Oh. <laughs> Shake it out. <laughs> no. Okay. So, board, I, I'm hearing general consensus on school safety grant cutting that twenty thousand through this budget year and reevaluating next year. <clears throat> Maintaining the active living coordinator, additional position. 
in the budget, but reducing that to a quarter of a year with the plan to bring them on fourth quarter. And then reducing the Community Appearance Commission budget for the Jefferson Street Park to $3,000. Has all the money been used that we allocated for the facade grants and those sorts of things? Great question. So that is a great question. So the truth is each year we typically have some funds left over. We have a small base of eligible recipients for our commercial grants, just given the nature of the businesses we have in town. We have seen that um, in some cases, uh, recipients who received it last year request again, and because they're the only one who's really applying, we'll provide that for them. Um, I can't give you uh, an exact figure on how much money is currently left over, but I, I can tell you that in both the facade grant line item and the historic preservation grant line item, there is currently right now budget remaining for this current fiscal year. The issues that we find with those programs, I'll speak, you didn't bring it up, but I'll mention the historic preservation grant. Usually people have smaller projects that they're working on. And so they're usually not using the most money that they could get. Uh, that program provides up to $2,000 per homeowner, mm -hmm. um, but it's a matching grant. They have to provide a dollar for dollar, for dollar match. So you'd have to spend $4,000 to get the full $2,000. And we have some people spending 1000 even 500 and only getting smaller amounts. Um, so if you're looking for uh, additional savings, potentially, I'm not saying this, but I am, um, Perhaps some um, reduction in the grant programs could probably be accomplished without having too great significant negative impact on eligible recipients because we do find that there is typically money left over in both line items. So that being the case, Heather, can you point us to where that line item is in the proposed budget? So if you're looking, if you're looking at governing, governing body, body, the uh, Community 39. Appearance Commission 610 yep. and Historic Preservation Commission 620, uh, those grants are within those amounts. But there are 10,000 of each of those amounts you see there are the existing grant programs. And that's programmed with up to, uh, I, so if, if we had five grantees in each of those programs requesting $2,000, that would use all the funds. But if, for, for example, if we have some of those requesting less, then we can do more than five. Uh, that's kind of the way it's set up. Well, let me ask you, Kyle. If you were proposing this, what would you suggest? Um, <clears throat> let me say this. Uh, here's my be very, on the safe side. Right. I, I don't want you to get so, too much. Um, these grants are very useful as part of the town's sort of soft power projection that we have funding available to support homeowners. Mm -hmm. It's great to keep those grant programs, if only to be able to say that to homeowners. Now, we have had, uh, for example, in our uh, newsletters, multiple times we've let the entire community know we have homeowner grants available, but unfortunately, we don't get much traction, even despite letting everyone know. Mm -hmm. And the ones who do uh, reach out to us are are usually doing smaller projects. Now I will say the people who we help are extremely grateful mm -hmm. and having the support gives them a positive impression of the town. Um, so definitely keeping the programs but potentially trimming them. I, I think to jump in, you know, currently we're, again, we're on a $10,000 basis. If you uh, had $8,000 to work with for each rather than 10, for example, that's probably an amount that you wouldn't see a overall uh, you know, challenge of running a similar quality program or impact, uh, but at the end of the day, that would trim another four thousand dollars off as we're looking at things. Would, that would, you would agree? be a, there would be absolutely no impact. Uh, well, you carry somebody over from this. Yeah, that's what year. I was going to ask. Is how like what do you project at the end of this year out of your initial budget pot? What percentage do you anticipate not using that'll be turned back in? Well, that's. 
we had usually to at the end of the budget year i'm st i'm rushing to find people to give money to <laughs> like i'm saying do you do you, you have a project for which we can help you yeah please apply because well, we're right, running out of money right. um i would say the manager's suggestion of reducing it to eight thousand even if you would reduce it to six thousand i think there would be no meaningful impact so how about a compromise i was going to suggest cutting the budgets by 25 percent, seventy five hundred. What do we have in there now? I know you got. So I was pull, I pulled up the um, budget versus analysis report from April, um, and I know we had two come through for that in the month of May, right? Mm -hmm. Correct for so, the historic preservation. Yeah, I'll just say the year to date activity so far is I mean there's two thousand dollars and three thousand dollars in between the historic preservation and the appearance. That's your year to date activity as of April. So I, I mean, I think that the reduction of ten five percent is is a good suggestion. I'm also going to throw this out that I feel much more comfortable doing that out of respect for Miss Seacrest. Um, I don't think we can, in good conscience, uh, eliminate the school safety grant for a year to reevaluate and maintain. While I uh, do not get me wrong. I love your work, and I think it is very important to this community. We cannot, we know how passionate she is about that grant, and it is a very important reason why she can't be here tonight. And so I think it's important that I like that we're going to reevaluate that, and I my vote has not changed, but I do think trimming in some other areas balances out benefits for our citizens. Um, kind of equalizing in some other departments, not just sacrificing such a large amount by getting rid of that entire thing. So I think that uh, I really appreciate your suggestion and your honesty with that. And again, I really commend what you do in your work because it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Board, is there general consensus on that to cut both those grant programs by about 25%? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm not prepared for your abatement. How much is the broken abatement? So that, we, that's that's this fiscal year. We don't have anything budgeted for next fiscal year. This year's budget. This year's. Yeah. How much? How much is it? About fifty four thousand. Fifty six thousand, I believe, is the quote we've. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so board, that is a cut of forty three thousand, which is about one point one six cent deduction. It takes it. It would take it below, below six cent based on the current proposed budget. But obviously, we know we've got some additional expenses with insurance rates coming in higher and the fire safety. But I would also say is uh, if we have money left over from our facade grants and stuff like that, maybe let's not push those so hard this year if we're looking for additional funding <laughs> for PPE. <laughs> but we appreciate your efforts yes. in past years. Excellent work. <laughs> well, and, and maybe, you know, maybe it's if the same people are coming back asking year after year, maybe right. we ask them to, to uh, make it every other year. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's an option. Okay. Uh -uh. All right, board, anything else? Or staff that's willing to. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for taking one for the team. All right. Um, how is FICA, how is FICA on? Um, the fire department figured. It seems to me like I was looking at numbers for this year's budget and comparing some numbers. Could, could you repeat the beginning of that question again? Um, I, I, I guess I, I, my first part of the question was how is FICA um, figured on salaries and particularly the fire department because I was looking at um, wages and comparing it to what we have paid and where the FICA 
stands now. Um, the original budget was for the fire department was for salaries was um, Four hundred sixty-two thousand nine hundred thirteen, and the FICA was forty-eight two sixty-five, and we're looking at um, salaries pro projected for recommended for this year at forty-eight six zero six six, and the FICA at forty thousand eight sixty-nine. So it's actually less budgeted for FICA, but an increased amount for wages. So, so is that right? There's there are formulas in there that are driving all those numbers, but one one factor that's happening with the difference between our current year and the, and the next year is not just the increase in the full time, but a decrease in the part time. Right. So if you, you know, if you look year to year, um, at the at the fire department, um, what's being recommended for next year personnel wise is actually less than what we have planned in the. In the the original adopted, which included grant funding, et cetera, for the current year, so the overall went down. Okay. Uh, the overall personnel cost for the fire department in the current year adopted budget, which has since been amended, uh, was eight ninety nine six twenty nine. It was amended down to four five forty one uh, once we made the adjustments we did in January, and then the recommended for next year is seven sixty five. So that combination of changes is what is what you're seeing in FICA. Okay. Yeah. I knew it was a cost the board amount. Okay. Board, anything else? Okay. Thank you all very much for your time and um input and good suggestions. Mr. Miller, thank you for the recommendations. Yes, sir. That's my job. And staff, thank y'all for your time. Appreciate everybody's involvement in the process and uh, we will we will make uh, these adjustments and look at the other things I discussed so that as we're heading towards June, uh, you know, you've got a, a rebalanced budget ordinance before you for consideration. And the public hearing mm -hmm. is when? I believe the 6th of June is our pre-agenda, so that would be when the public hearing is scheduled and, and then uh, you would be able to adopt uh, at any point after the public hearing, but we'll, we'll be kind of as staff preparing, uh, targeting that Tuesday, the I think the 11th uh, regular meeting in June. So you're going to get out the proposed new budget to, for, before the pre-agenda, is that correct? Yes. All right. You have everything you need from us at this point for a budget. Yes. Okay. Great. All right. Oh, I did have one other question. <laughs> no, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> too late. We don't hear it. Um, well, this is, uh, you mentioned in here something about the sale of logo items. Yeah. Um, are we going to open a company store? <laughs> You know, now I feel like Steve Blunt putting jokes in there, except for uh, <laughs> except for that wasn't a joke. But uh, the idea is that you know if we if we get town hats or town bumper stickers, et cetera, uh, we could have them available, whether it be you know here in town hall or to, for sale during a you know Winterfest or different mm -hmm. events. But that just puts a mechanism in our fee schedule so that we could do that. But uh, it's a great what branding? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I've, I've worked with. <laughs> company store yeah. kind of things before yeah. you where you could go online and order something and have it logo yeah yeah okay talk to my wife she'd tell you a lot of different <laughs> my brother's name is spencer you guys would provide me christmas presents for years to come just something to think about you have to open for longevity i've been wondering how we welcome him to we the community come up with properly some good stuff, I'm sure. he just mapped it out for us well and i wondered uh, i wondered Perfect. if you would promise to wear it at every other public uh every other public event you attend. <laughs> i have to maintain my objectivity i have a good chance i would like a i think i could probably look good that well they're sporty i like, I like that that's a good job like that color on yeah. I would like a bumper sticker that said, what would Steve Miller do? No, I don't think so. I won't. You will see it on my tweet within a matter of days. I'll get one. Uh.
All right. We all thank you so much. Um, there is a need tonight to go into executive session uh, for the manager's uh, annual review. And then also, um, there, uh, I do think there is a need to discuss um, the negotiation of property uh, as well. And so uh, we have Mr. Dees here with us tonight uh, to help with that piece as well. So is there a motion to go into executive session at this point? So moved. Motion by Mr. Muhammad. Is there a second? Second. All right. There is a second by Ms. Sledge. All in favor? All right. We are in... Closed session, we will take uh, oh, a five minute uh, intermission. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let me. Uh... Oh, sounds like it's time.